<laughs> and the first half was a thing of beauty. I mean, this is three primetime games now in the last eight days where the home team looked flat and out of sorts. And the first half, 14 to seven, then the first drive of the third quarter, it's 21 to seven. The Ravens are down. I credit them for waking up, but the Bengals did have it figured out early. But when the dam broke, man, the town got flooded. I mean, it was as bad as it could be for the Bengals' defense. It got to a point in the second half where it's like they, they, they just will not stop the Ravens. No matter what they do, is that there was that one that was almost an interception that felt like the air would have come out the balloon and maybe the Bengals would have had a chance to kind of reclaim a lead and hold the lead. But other than that, Lamar Jackson, and we I, – I don't know who the MVP is going to be, and I'm a firm believer we got to wait to see who the one seeds are because the quarterbacks of the two number one seeds have the best chance, I think, based on history to win the MVP. But my God, Lamar Jackson looked even more special than ever last night. He, he just – he had a calm to him. He said recently how the game is slowing down. He understands what they're doing. And he still has the high degree of physical ability to take advantage of the openings that he sees wherever they might be, Rodney. Yeah, and I'm not worried about Lamar. I'm worried about offensive coordinator Todd Munkin. He's the guy that's going to control if they, if they find themselves in the AFC championship game or not by the simple way he makes the calls. If he makes it all about Lamar, they're going to struggle. Lamar is at his best, and we saw him last night, and he played terrific, but he's at his very best consistently when you have that run game. You can implement Derrick Henry and use those big tight ends. You, you see a guy like Rashad Bateman. He's really stopped stepping up and really proven that he could be that number two receiver. Zay Flowers has been out, outstanding. Mark Edwards is good to see him back implemented in that offense. This offensive line, I still have questions about Ronnie Staley. He's been kind of inconsistent up and down. So they still have a lot of questions, and not and, and that's not even mentioning their defense, which has really been the weakest part of their, of their team. So, you know, yeah, the Ravens look good. The record looks good. Lamar's running around. He's making a lot of passes and touchdowns. But at the end of the day, I'm concerned about the Ravens because they don't look good enough to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, remember, we talked a few weeks ago, Dean Pease, the former Patriots assistant coach, longtime defensive coordinator. They brought him in as a as a consultant analyst, et cetera, to help Zach Orr. At a certain point, it's not the coaching. At a certain point, it's the personnel. And there's only so much you can do, especially now that Kyle Hamilton has an ankle injury. John Harbaugh said after the game, it's not serious. But anytime I see a guy in a boot, I I, I assume that it's not something that's just going to go away on its own naturally and quickly. So uh, you got you got to wonder and worry if you're a Ravens fan how long Kyle Hamilton's going to be out because that that makes that defense even worse. And, and, and I look at a guy like Marcus Williams and Marcus Williams they brought him in a few years ago and they paid him they paid him at the top of the market paid him a lot of money and he hasn't been an impact player he hasn't like they, they benched him last week or two weeks ago and he he comes back and he makes a play but he hasn't been that consistent playmaker that they need Cal Hamilton Cal Hamilton has been fantastic he's been one of the top two or three safeties in all of football since he's walked you know walked in with Baltimore but Marcus Williams, he's a guy that struggled. Eddie Jackson, he struggled. And it just seems like with this defense, they don't have great pass rush. I know they have great effort guys, but they don't have that consistent great pass rush. And this secondary, they compete. Stevens is a solid player, but they just don't get it done consistent enough, Mike. And I think they're going to be in trouble when they play against the Kansas City Chiefs of the world. Namde Matabuki showed up big last night with three sacks, but no one else had a sack for the Ravens. They need more than just one guy who can make a big play from time to time. And, uh, yeah, they got work to do. If they want to – I mean, they're going to get to the playoffs most likely, barring a complete and total collapse. But if they want to win, if they want to beat the Chiefs, and that's the team that that the Ravens need to worry about most, if they want to beat the Chiefs, they got they got to play better on defense. And let me say this. The big winner last night to me was the Chiefs because with each loss the Bengals take, the chances of the Chiefs having to play the Bengals in the postseason are reduced. And there's only two quarterbacks who have ever beaten Patrick Mahomes in the postseason, Tom Brady and Joe Burrow. And Tom Brady's not playing. And I assume he's not coming back as an injury replacement for anyone this year. So the Chiefs need to avoid Joe Burrow. And if the Bengals don't make it to the playoffs, that makes 
Kansas City's path to the Super Bowl a little bit easier because Joe Burrow relishes the chance to face the Chiefs and take down the Chiefs. And the way he played last night, now he needs help around him too, but the way he played last night, in theory, they could beat anybody. Now, they yeah, did last night. Offensively, he but, played fantastic, Mike. He played fantastic. And the thing that really impressed me was he really helped his offensive line out by moving around, scrambling, buying time for these guys. And you see that he looks healthier. He's moving around. He looks he looks athletic. He doesn't look stiff. And he's making great decisions. He's getting out the, out of the pocket, keeping his vision down the field and spreading the ball around. If they can get anything from their defense, if they can get anything from their run game, and Chase Brown, this kid, I think he's doing a really good job. I thought his fumble really changed the complexion of the game and went from 21 to seven with all the momentum to 21 to 14. But Joe Burrow and his deep passes and his ability to find Jamar Chase, man, is just unbelievable. And look at Jamar Chase being a hot dog right now. <laughs> hey, and you know, at one point late in the game, it was hard not to wonder whether those few seconds that he wasted might come back and bite the Bengals in the butt. It didn't play out that <laughs> way because they had enough time to get down the field. But those few seconds that tick, uh, to tick off the clock, you have, you have no idea who it might hurt. And it might have hurt. The Bengals, in the end, it would have given the Ravens less time to get down the field if the Bengals had converted the two-point. Let's go back to the Ravens. Let's hear a little bit from John Harbaugh, head coach of the team. And uh, I think there's a little bit of Lamar that pops in here as well on Lamar's MVP quality performance from last night. And it starts with Lamar, and oftentimes it ends with Lamar. But in between Lamar and Lamar, there's a lot of great players out there, you know, that, that, are, that are surrounding him. And I think that's kind of where our offense is at right now. And our offense still knows that they can get a lot better. I mean, all the things in the first half, those are things that, that we definitely can do better. And you can't say short week. You can't look at any of that stuff. I mean, we practiced well this week. And, but, but all the guys that made the plays, you know, with Lamar out there, I think, um, deserve a lot of credit, too. Uh, I was telling my guys on the sideline, we got to score. Um, if they score, we got to score. You know, that's the type of game it's going to be. We've we seen that. Uh, from the first snap, you know, um, but but I'm proud of my guys because we we finished one of those these tough type game type tough type environment environmental games. We came through. Yeah, and kudos to the Ravens for managing Lamar Jackson the way they did. He had two days off of practice last week with a back and a knee injury. He was off Tuesday with a knee injury. He only had four rushing yards on Sunday. I think it prompted legitimate questions as to is there some condition that's hampering him. He looked fine last night. They got him through that two games, four days apart stretch with two victories, and now they get a little time on the back end, and I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are coming up next. They still play Pittsburgh twice. You know, we got two great Steelers, or not Steelers, Bengals-Ravens games in the first 10 weeks of the season. Hopefully we'll get two great Steelers-Ravens games down the stretch. And how could you not like Lamar Jackson? And you just listen to him talk and talk about the humility and, and him including his teammates and depending on his teammates. And that's what I love about Lamar. He doesn't make it about himself. He makes it about his teammates. And they have a lot of respect for him. When we're at the game site and we're talking to him, they always talk so highly and speak so highly of Lamar and his leadership and his ability to pull guys to the side and speak to them one-on-ones. And that's what he's done. He's he's actually become more of a leader, and they have a lot more respect for that guy. And, and, and come on, Mike, look the way he's playing. Yes, I talked about – I didn't tell you who was going to be my MVP. It's not Lamar, so we'll have to discuss that we'll in do, a few. All right. And the next three games for the Ravens before their bye, because they have a late bye week 14, at the Steelers, 1 o'clock Eastern – Next Sunday, how in the hell is Ravens at Steelers a 1 o'clock Eastern game? That's good. That's good. But it, it cries out prime time. And then the next week, they are in prime time. The Monday night of Thanksgiving week, Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. As the Chargers are getting better and better all the time, it's Lamar going to L.A. to take on Jim Harbaugh's Chargers. And then the following Sunday, the Eagles in a late afternoon Sunday showdown so some some tough tests coming uh then after the bye Steelers again Texans on Christmas day but the Ravens right now at seven and three are looking pretty darn good and the Bengals are going to have some work to do to to take one of those spots but when you look at all the standings in the AFC it's it's not by any means impossible 
for the Bengals to keep to, to keep to start <laughs> to start stacking some wins together. They haven't done it yet, but I think they can start doing it down the stretch. And th- there's there's definitely Mike, you know what you're doing, Mike. No, let me tell night. you what you're doing, Mike. Mike, let me tell you what you're doing. See, what you're getting doing? caught up. In, you're getting caught up in the moment with Joe Burrow and all the numbers that he's putting up. But you're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at this is just a one dimensional offense. You're not looking at the fact that they can't run the ball consistently. You're not looking at the fact that they give up a lot of big plays on the defensive side of the ball. So now you're expecting Joe Flacco every. T- I mean Joe um, Burrow every team that he plays against for him to go out there and put up 30 something points to pass the ball for three or 400 yards. It's not going to happen, Mike. When you start playing, especially in the AFC, you got to be able to play defense and, and, the Cincinnati Bengals, they can't consistently play good enough defense. Up front, they've gotten better. They've gotten a little healthier. They're solid at the linebacker position, but they are weak and young in the secondary, and they get exploited. They miss a lot of tackles. They don't communicate, and it's just not a great football team. And I know whenever the Cincinnati Bengals plays against the Kansas City Chiefs, they, they raise their level. It's something about that matchup they're not afraid of. They always feel like they can beat the Chiefs. But at the end of the day, if they don't improve that defense, Mike, they're going home back to Cincinnati when it comes playoff time. And I forgot we got a flex. You're going to get to see the Bengals. All these guys you're trashing from the Bengals are going to get to come up and talk to you. <laughs> like the time and Dominican Sue came over and you and I were, were uh, fairly close to each other and he only wanted to talk to Tony Dungy. He wanted to splatter me. He was smart enough not to mess with you. Even against Ndamukong Sue, I'd take Rodney Harrison. But, uh, yeah, you're going to have some of those Bengals defensive players. And Lou Anarumo, it's going to be some interesting conversations. I like to be hanging around to hear some of those. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.